Okay. Uh, so yeah, welcome back. Um, you know, we're continuing this uh, trend of just talking about units and, and um, balance and all that stuff, which is like my favorite stuff to talk about. It's just units, how they work, uh, how they, you know, how they affect them and all that stuff. So uh, we're talking about the collab this week um, because, well, obviously it's here. Um, it actually kind of snuck up on me. I, yeah, it was like, I thought it was maybe next week or something. I, I, I thought there'd be more news leading up to it. But again, that kind of goes to show how lackluster it is considering it's just a rerun. Um, we're not getting any extra characters this time around, which, you know, it is what it is, but whatever. Um, so yeah, the first one in the first wave is going to be Rem. Um, out of the two, I guess if I could say here, out of the two between Rem and Amelia, personally, I would suggest you pull for Rem, uh, if you could only choose, um, if you'd only choose one. Um, otherwise, obviously take them both. Um, fortunately, I mean, I don't have enough crystals to pity both of them. Uh, fortunately, I've already kind of, I've got these units already, so I don't have to worry about it too much. Um, let's talk about Ram's kit and what's going on with her. Uh, so, let's go back here this way. We'll talk about, we'll still talk about Ram in a little bit, but again, she's free to everyone and everybody's got a five-star version of her, so, you know, it's not that big a deal. Um, so let's talk about Ram here. Uh, on top of Ram just being, you know... A great character in general, right? For anybody who's seen RE Zero, I haven't seen that show, but I hear she's a really great character. But you know, I would have, I, I kind of would have pulled for her just because of the character in that show, despite not knowing anything about it. Um, but yeah, and despite you know, not not despite, but in addition to that, she's also a very good character in general. Um, so we'll talk about. Usually, I talk about before I've like I was like, oh, you know, why people talk about the S3 and not the S1 first. Um, but I like to talk about, and I mentioned in that video kind of where I wanted to go with the S1 first, but I, I, I mentioned that video in terms of like, I want to talk about the unit in terms of like least significant to most significant. So funnily enough, with Ram, her least significant ability is in fact this S3. This S3 is good, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's got so much stuff loaded into here, but it just goes to show how much of a testament that this S3 is to her kit in general. Like, Rem is so good that despite how good this S3 is, and, like, many other people would wish they'd have an S3 as good as this, this is, like, the least impactful skill in her kit, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, increases attack by three for three turns, which means that it increases it for the usage of the skill and two turns after, which is insane because, you you know, you build her slow and on counter set. And we'll get to the build in a little bit. Um, yeah, so increases uh, attack for three turns, which is good, just gives her more damage. Um... It decreased hit chance is actually a lot more useful than um, <laughs> than you might think because it's a hundred percent chance to decrease hit, uh, and we'll we'll see why that's like so effective later on. The one thing that's actually detrimental in this kit is in fact the fifty percent combat readiness increase. Um, I feel like this is a sort of a it's it's fifty well I mean obviously it's fifty fifty it says right there but this is fifty fifty it's also a, it's a bad thing it's also a good thing in some situations. Um, but we'll go over that when we go over like the rest of her kit. So, uh, yeah, like I said, this is a pretty decent S3. Uh, giving yourself attack buff for three turns and then uh, blinding everybody as well as doing just really good AoE damage. I mean, you know, what else could you want? Um, so this right here is the other skill um, that's equal. Well, it's a little better than the first one, especially because, like I said, most people run around counter set, so you kind of want to max this skill out. Uh, so she attacks enemy with a morning star, 50% chance once you mull it to defense break, which is good, which means that she has uh, decent single target damage, which is important because, you know, you can kind of choose whether you want to just go single target or AoE. Um, yeah, so you can decrease defense, you know, whatever. And then, yeah, that's mainly, that's the, basically the entirety of the skill. Uh, Soul Burn gives you 100% chance, which is decent, but we'll see why it's almost broken um, <laughs> in a little bit. But like I said, she's running around counters. So this is going to be a very, this is going to be a high priority, you know, high priority skill. So now we get to Rem. Rem again, like Ken, better than Ken. However, uh, Rem's S two is basically her entire kit. Like a unit. Like if you want to know who has the, these skills, you can go look at like uh, what's her name, like Clarissa, Water Clarissa. Yeah, no, I think that's I think that's her name. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, she's got a mace. She looks exactly like her, but, you know, in Epic 7, she looks like a nun. She's got the mace or whatever. But anyway, she's got a, a very similar kit. AoE S3, uh, Defense Break S1, right? Now, granted, obviously, Rem has five-star stats, blah, 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 so on and so forth. However, they got very similar kits. The thing that differentiates the two is, in fact, this S2. Um, this S2 is what makes Rem just basically, you know, absurdly strong. It's what gives her place in the meta. Um, 
So if anybody dies, she gets Demon Mode, which Demon Mode lasts for two turns. Uh, this is an insane buff because, as you can see here, she is now unaffected by debuffs and some harmful effects. Oh, is she not? I wonder, actually, I've been kind of taking for granted that she's still affected by CR reduction, but I'm actually not sure. It says some harmful effects, so I'm not... Yeah, now, now that I'm thinking about it, I wonder if uh, I haven't been noticing that she's immune to that. Um, but, you know, take that as, as you will. Uh, but the, also the other part to this is she also ignores effect resistance, right? This is insane. Um, which means that, like I mentioned earlier, this 100% this chance to decrease hit if she has demon mode blinds everybody 100%, no matter, you know, regardless of their effect resistance. Again, it's not that big a deal, but having blind is, like, super annoying. Like, it's just... Everybody hates it. Like no, nobody likes blind, right? Nobody likes going into an RB and then he blinds half your team off a of lucky S3, even though you've got you know most of your team has like 50 or more effect resistance, right? Now imagine that like you know immune to effect resistance. This this skill is when she has demon mode. Uh, the other thing is that demon mode allows her to S1 into another S1, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. When the caster is granted demon mode, grants the caster an extra attack with the same skill, um, which basically means that. She can defense break into a second S1 and basically kill anybody. Now, on top of that, you can actually kill some of the tankier units in the game, like, say, a Ruel or something, or, you know, something with high effect resistance, because she's now ignores effect resistance. And then you soul burn that for basically a guarantee. So she has decent AoE with annoying debuff uh, and insane single target damage as soon as she gets to demon mode. And granted, that if they don't have immunity, but we'll talk about why immunity is not that big a deal to Rem right now. Uh, so that's like, again, you can see how strong she is just based off of those two things, uh, just off the demon mode and all that, without even factoring in the second part of the skill. So again, let's go back to, let's keep going, let's keep reading. Um, can only be activated every once every five turns. Again, it only lasts two turns, so you kind of want to be as slow as possible to make most usage uh, of this demon mode buff. So, you know, there you go. They, they kind of tell you how you want to build her, basically, uh, in there. Uh, can only be one, uh, when an ally accepts the caster's attack, she has a 50%, 15% chance of counterattack that goes up to 20%. So basically, she's got an el a built-in Elber's Ritual Sword, which, for one, wouldn't be that bad if it was just like this activating. But it's actually insanely worse because when she counterattacks based off of this, she activates Iron Strike, which is in which like we'll we'll look at it here. Um, so the Iron Strike takes precedence over regular counterattack. So Iron Strike attacks all enemies, decreasing buff durations by one. Again, if she has Demon Mode, that debuff strip or reduction or whatever, it, that buff strip or reduction is irresistible. Like, it doesn't matter how much immunity you have, your your buffs are being reduced by one. Like, it's, you know, that's you got to deal with that. So basically, she kind of deals with, with uh, what's his name? Uh, ML Crow, right? ML Crow's immunity is now basically worthless because she's just going to keep stripping it, and that's not, not going to do anything, right? Um, so yeah, the other thing is she also puts in healable, which is actually you know for those of you who played against Rem is one of the more irritating buffs out there because just randomly it'll hit someone. Well, I mean it'll hit everybody, right? But you know, it's always like somehow seems to stick onto like the worst characters for it to stick onto. Um, so as you can see here, this is kind of like what makes Rem as strong as she is. This AoE S2 on an Elbrus is like, you just can't hit anybody because Rem is there. And then you have to basically single out Rem, which gives the rest of the team uh, free reign to do whatever they want against your team. As well as Rem's usually on counter set and decently tanky, which means that she's going to be counterattacking every so often. Which, regardless, Rem wins no matter what. Whether you attack her, you don't attack her, unless you like one-shot her out of, into oblivion or whatever. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of, you know, this is Rem's whole kit, right? She's got a built-in Elbrus with an AoE um, S2 attached to it. Uh, you build her on counter set, and she's got a bunch of debuffs that are like... She's not a debuffer, but she's got enough debuffs that it's like it makes this irresistibility, like, worthwhile. She strips, unhealable, blind, and defense break. All with, like, inability to be resisted, right? Um, so just like this entire kit combined together makes her to be like a really strong, really like overpowering unit. Um, and that's not even considering the fact that you can see here she's got crit chance self imprint, which means you can dedicate more, uh, what's the word, more stats to other, you know, you can reallocate other stats to more important things. Or not more important things, but you know what I mean, like, it alleviates that. Um, so yeah, like I said, if you're going to pick between Rem and Amelia, I would go with Rem. 
Uh, Rem has just been like a huge nuisance. A lot of there's a lot of teams on defense, a lot of Guild War defenses, and um, a lot of arena defenses that are running Rem because of how useful she is, how much of a, t a deterrent to Cleaves she is as well. Because if she counterattacks and kills one of the squishy units, she's now immune to all uh, debuffs, and now it's hard to deal with her because you either brought debuffs in because you got some sort of fast debuffing team or or some fast control team. You try to one shot, but a lot of your one shot units are kind of like squishy, so you know. Rem deals with that pretty well as well. Uh, and she actually hits insanely hard. Um, yeah, she, she, she hits really hard, especially because she's got her own built-in attack buff. And most of the time you're running her on... Um, well, well, we'll talk about that in the build, but we'll go over this artifact here first. This artifact is actually, like, decent on some units. Um, crit chance is not bad. There's nothing, you know... You can't complain about crit chance. 15% just for free. Um, and then you get a 24% chance, uh, or 24% um, CR push when someone when someone dies. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you kill if the unit kills it or whatever. When someone dies, your unit or is it your unit? Yeah, when your unit or their units, whatever, um, you're just getting pushed up 24%, which is actually pretty crazy. Um, but like I said, there's not a whole lot of units that can use this because there's so many. <laughs> The thing with warrior artifacts is there's so many good like focal ones. So like the best ones are Draco Plate, um, what's it called? Draco Plate, Sigurd Scythe. Uh, what was the other ones? Those are like the main two. Most warriors in the meta are running Draco Plate or Sigurd Scythe. There's other people who are running selective things. So I'll take um, Ravi is running like uh, Crimson Seed or something like that. Not all of them, but you know, mo you know, comes up every so often. But yeah, so this artifact is pretty good. It's just hard to figure out who to use it on. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about Rem's build and what you want to run on her and whatnot. So not everybody runs 100% the same. There's basically two Rem builds you can go for. I go for the counter set because I don't have the set I would kind of prefer her to be on, which is, for me, I would rather her be on uh, Injury set, but I don't have that. I, that's on Bellion right now. I don't have a spare. Uh, but counter set works just as well anyway, right? Her S1, again, when she's in Demon mode, if she counters with the counter set... She's S1-ing twice, and usually you're going to have um, attack buff, right? Which is insane amount of damage. Not to mention, you have a chance to just defense break yourself by attacking Rem, because if she attacks twice, and she's got a 50% chance to inflict defense break, two 50% chance rolls, they don't guarantee, they don't guarantee um, a defense break, but, you know, they're pretty good. They're pretty good at it. Um, yeah, because they're independent of each other, so it doesn't, like, it doesn't stack up to be 100%. But theoretically... You can kind of pretend like it's 100% chance, so hopefully you're going to get him with one. Um, this is my build for her. She's got a little more damage than survivability. Some people, you'd probably want to drop attack a little bit and then, you know, crit damage a little bit to get more, like, 1300 defense as well as maybe 20k, uh, 20k health. But personally, I prefer her to be on higher attack because I'd rather her end the fight sooner. So if someone cleaves, um, with this much attack and damage, she has a good chance of just killing, straight up killing one of the units on a counter attack because they're usually so squishy. Um, yeah, I kind of, I just kind of like this build in general. Um, like I said, you kind of want her to have a higher health bar because she heals so well off of Sigurd Scythe. Um, and usually this is basically the, let's change it. This is basically the artifact you want on her. She doesn't really benefit from anything else, uh, as well as Sigurd Scythe because... Um, she AOE S3s or S2s, which you you lifesteal off of all of that. So at any moment she's under 50% HP and she pulls off an S3, um, she's healing back to full, which is, again, another one of the reasons why Rem is so powerful is just that the fact that she's like, she sustains herself insanely well. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, you want to kind of aim for, for at least 3K, at least 12K or 1200 defense, and at least, uh, I don't know, I kind of think you probably want to hit 1800 h 18,000 HP. However, obviously you see here that she's lower. Um, personally, I'm I'm okay with this, but you know, like I said, you probably want to hit closer to 18 18,000. Um, again, you don't want effectiveness or effect resistance because uh, her demon mode blocks all that stuff off, so you don't have to worry about that. Speed, you want it as low as possible so that your demon mode buff lasts as long as possible. And again, she's on counter set, so just make her slow. Don't don't waste any stats on speed. Uh, yeah, and like I said, I a lot of people have her at like 250 crit damage, but I wanted to boost the crit damage as much as I could to get more out of this uh, Sigurd Scythe, because uh, because this attack percentage here is going to scale better with more crit damage than any uh, anything else. So I just wanted to like get her to that 300%, and I'm kind of glad it's at uh, 300 exactly. 
Obviously, I don't have a max Sigurd Scythe or whatever. But yeah, so this is it. Um, the only thing you can change is probably the offset. Um, let's go look here. There's not a whole lot of offsets that she can run with. Um, you can run her on. Re you don't want to run her on resistance, but you can run her on health or defense set if you need those stats better. Uh, but obviously, she doesn't need immunity. I mean, you can run her on immunity, and there's nothing wrong with that. But personally, I, I would rather just have the crit set. Um, save the immunity for someone else who like needs it more desperately because she has an she has a built-in thing in her kit that makes her immune to skills. So I'm just gonna you know I'm gonna leave the immunity out of it. Um, but I'm not saying it's a bad idea, and I think if you are very cautious about like debuffs and all stuff, I you know immunity is a good way to go. Uh, just personally, I kind of want to like if she has a way to get rid of them, I'll I'll leave her the way she is and have her deal with it that way. Um, like I said, crit set is a good way to go. A hit set, obviously, like I said, you don't want to, you don't really want to build effectiveness on her. Uh, immunity set, maybe, or not immunity, unity set, maybe. Um, it'd be pretty irritating to get, like, it's always annoying as it is to get dual attacks. Like, you're, she's doing, you're fighting, one of, you're fighting them, and then one of their units dual attacks with her, and you, she gets the, the follow-up, right? The, so that's basically three attacks into one unit, and basically that person's gonna die. Um... So yeah, Unity is a pretty good, interesting choice if you have decent Unity set, but nobody has Unity set, so, you know, whatever. If you can get these stats, like for me, if I could get these same stats with a Unity set, then obviously I'd put that on her, but I'd be dropping a lot of crit in that situation, so I'd prefer not to. Um, yeah, like I said, um, she's basically already kind of out of the box built that way. Now, like I said, the other, the other build you can go for her is Injury set, which I would probably prefer, um, just because she AoEs so much that you're threatening a lot of, like, health reduction because of her um yeah you know she kind of it gives her the same ability and people used to run her on uh injury set until bellion came out and they all dropped it on to bellion instead so <laughs> take that for what you will uh but yeah so let's go talk about um amelia now funnily enough i guess not that fun it's kind of annoying that we we, we got two waters out of this um i don't know i just would have been nice to get like a different element for these limited units because Basically, almost every unit that's limited is water, which makes water, like... Which is what has made water, like, at the top of the meta for so long. But anyway, let's talk about Amelia here. Now, Amelia is... I want to say she's... I don't want to say she's 100% equal to Rem in terms of how strong she is, but she can be, depending on whether she's built well enough. The difference is, you need more... You need better gear on Amelia than you need on Rem, um to get the minimum out of her. So they can be the same, it's just that to get to the point where they're both equally as like powerful, Amelia takes more gear. So for most people, I would just recommend pulling for Rem. Um, obviously you want both, so if you can take both, take both. Just know that your Amelia is gonna be kind of lackluster for a long time until you get you know good speed gear on her. As you can see here, mine's 224, or 244, but even then it's, she's pretty slow. Um, so let's talk about Amelia and her kit and why she's so strong. So we're gonna go with this one first. Uh, she attacks the enemy with the S1, she heals a little bit of HP. That's that's it, right? Like, she doesn't really do... This doesn't do anything. It's just here to be here. It's just an additional health, right? Who cares? Um, we'll talk about her S3. Her S3 is pretty powerful. Uh, you get a team-wide two debuff dispel with barrier and healing, which is pretty good. Um, basically, she, for me, anyway, she's kind of a replacement to... Um, uh, what's her name here? To Montmorency. Um... Just because of how good she clears debuffs and how fast you can make her. You can make her really fast and then have all kinds of stuff. The difference compared to um, Angel uh, Angelica here, or Angelic Montmorency, is that Amelia has the ability to threaten teams really bad, whereas Montmorency just sits there, right, and heals. Uh, and that comes from her S2. So her S2 uh, dispels two debuffs, which again adds more to like the debuff dispelling, as well as increasing attack for two turns and combat readiness for 50% for somebody. Uh, basically, she's a she's Montmorency fused with uh, Oxlots. You can kind of think of her that way, where she cleanses a lot as well as just pushing someone up, causing constant um, pressure on the opponent by giving somebody attack buff and that. Um, so basically, you know, I would pull Amelia if you use Oxlots for everything. Like if you Oxlots all the time, then I probably just pull for Amelia and put my Oxlots gear on Amelia. She's gonna she's not gonna have you know very good healing because that gear that's on Oxlots probably isn't. Um, attuned to healers but as long as she's fast and cycles a lot she can do a decent amount of healing with you know the healing on top of her on top of this is in addition to what oxlots does right um granted oxlots goes 100 percent and she does uh 50 
So you're you're missing out a little bit on there, but in terms of first turn viability, they're about the same because you're not you're not there's no unit who first turn needs 100% CR to go first, right? Um, the 50% is going to be enough to give whoever you want uh, first turn access with this buff, right? Um, so that's important to realize. Uh, but obviously, in follow up turns, uh, the 50% is not going to be as good as the 100%. But I think it's worth giving up that 50% and follow up turn viability for both. Uh, healing and shields as well as like debuff cleansing because now it's like half the stuff isn't going to affect you anymore um so yeah that, like i said this is my this is this is amelia um it's not there's not a whole lot to go into on her because like i said i kind of summed it up she's just a, a healer she's just an a lots that can heal right that can cleanse as well uh the soul burn on this is actually pretty useful to give you know somebody an extra healing so this heals everybody this heals somebody and then you activate this, and if you soul burn it, it gives a little more healing, which gives you a little more su sustainability. Um, the main thing you want to focus on her 100% is just speed and health, right? Those are the two main things. Uh, I got a decent amount of effect resistance, but it's not really useful because she still gets, you know, you really want, like, at minimum, like, 150 or something like that if you want to be a healer that, that's consistently here to cleanse. Uh, but I, I'm, she's not, so <laughs> this, is where, this is where we're at for now. Um... Yeah, just speed and health are the main things. So she health, so she can heal more, and speed, so she can go faster. Um, the thing that I didn't mention here is that she gets twenty five percent combat readiness boost to herself, which means that she can cycle faster. Um, one of the things that makes her so strong, in addition to just the fact that she does that, is the two turns on this. So what she's supposed to do is turn one, boost up somebody to take their turn and do whatever. This is on cooldown. Turn two, activate this to give everybody a shield, cleanse any buffs that may have gotten on to them uh, while, you know, before, she, after she did this. Uh, so give everybody these debuffs or whatever. And then she can turn, she can S2 again on top of that and get another um, person boosted up forward. And then she has ones and then we go back again. So now it's this. So basically what makes it, another thing that makes it so strong is that she does this every other turn. So she's basically a secondary, a tertiary, a, you know, a fourth a damage dealer in whatever team you bring her into because of how often she cycles this skill. Uh, along with the, again, along with the healing makes her insanely powerful. Um, in terms of gear, like I said, you just want speed gear and maybe effect resistance gear or immunity gear or something like that. Um, but speed is absolutely priority. And then after that, you know, pick whatever offset you want. You can do health, defense, whatever. Um, these just happen to have like the best speed stats for like that I can throw on her that maybe Cerise is going to use. Um, and then lastly, the artifact. The artifact, you can kind of put whatever you want here if we're being honest. Um, maybe not that. This is this might be pretty good. Um, what's the other one? Where is it? Is it this one? So this one can be useful on her as well because um, she does S1 fairly often, but she doesn't S1 as much. So if we look at her rotation. It's one, two, three, and then four. So on her fourth turn, she's going to activate this, and then the whole thing's going to reset. So it's one. So after this, it's going to go one, two, three, then four again. So between non attack skills and attack skills, her attack skills are the lowest used ones. So while you can run her on this, it's fine. Um, preferably, you want to run her on this if you want the extra healing, right? This is going to be very useful. Uh, personally, I run her on uh, Mega Hero's Tome, Mega Hero's Tome, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you can run her on this. It'll give her more turns and heal heal her more, which I think would be pretty good. However, I would rather trigger, where is it here? Trigger this thirty percent boost to her whenever I want to, because like I said, uh, her non-attack skills are one, two, three, three in a row, which basically means you got ninety percent. You basically got a whole free turn because of this. If you add up all the boosts this gave you, compared to like her skill rotation with this, compared to another Amelia who doesn't have this. You're going to get basically a whole extra turn on top of them running this, right? Um, but yeah, so that, that's kind of what's up with that. So, and again, that's that's in addition to this. So when she does this, she cycles around insanely fast because she now goes up to 55% combat readiness off of this every time she uses this. And like we mentioned, she uses this skill every other turn. Um, so yeah, this I think this gives her the most ability to be threatening. If you want her to heal more, again, run the... Um, which one is it? Is it the Rod of the Rod of Amaryllis? Run this. Um, but again, at worst, you can run this if you want to. Oh uh, yeah, I prefer. I just prefer her being a threat than you know, really having really good healing um, because I you know I like that side of her. But the you know the beauty of Amelia, she can go either way. If you want a really good healer, just invest in more healing stuff, and she'll be a better healer than probably a lot of the units in the game already, uh, with an attack thing attached to her. 
Uh, but yeah, so that's mainly it. Like I said, um, Amelia's good. She's great. And like I said, you really want to pull for both. But Amelia's going to take a little longer to get the gear ready for her than like a Rem. And Rem's going to impact the meta, impact your progression in the game a lot more, especially in PvP. I haven't even boosted this skill just to see how strong she is. Just to know, just to know how strong she is. She's not even max molded, and like this thing still does insane amount of damage. Um, now, lastly, and kind of least, but oh, actually, did I have? We should go talk about um, Amelia's artifact. Oh, it's not even here. I don't remember what Amelia's artifact is anymore. Uh, artifact. Let's go with Soul Weavers. Oh, it's, I actually know which one it is already. I, I, I skipped over it just because it wasn't that useful. It's this one. Um, this is actually pretty good on some Soul Weavers. Uh, yeah, like Soul Weavers that don't heal as much, you get an extra free healing off of this, which I think is pretty good. Um, and it's kind of independent of your actions. Like, you're just doing their... You're doing... You're, the Soul Weavers doing whatever they're doing, and then if someone gets hit below a certain amount of HP, they just get free healing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's go back to uh, talking about uh, the the last character in this list of uh, collab characters is Ram. Unfortunately, uh, Ram Ram is who it is. Ram is getting jobbed as usual, uh, from what I hear in the in the in the anime anyway. Uh, so yeah, Ram is basically just a PVE unit. She doesn't really have any place in the PVP meta, especially like just the fact that she has this. No, is it? Uh, I oh, know, yeah. Well, it's this skill. It's this right here that they basically made tailor made for her. But you know, besides that, uh, so the S three isn't too bad. Um, again, we're all gonna get her free, so you're gonna get a max style version of her free. All, all you know, six copies or whatever it takes to get here, which isn't too bad. It's actually pretty good. Obviously, you know, you can imprint that if you want. Um, it's actually pretty good. Uh, if you need a wind unit for Banshee, like barely starting out Banshee, she's gonna be useful. Just know that uh, one shot is kind of the way you want to go with Banshee. So just Hold on to her until you get something better. Um, or the, the Guilty Gear collab comes back again. Um, but yeah, she's not that bad. She's pretty good in the water expedition because, you know, she's got defense break, break, yeah, yeah. Defense break built in. Uh, greater attack buff, which is pretty insane, along with this percentage attack increase as well as this percentage attack increase. Um, she's going to be pretty hitting pretty hard, uh, so you just want crit damage on her as much as you can because she's already got a lot of built in attack anyway. Um, so yeah. The S2 gives her more attack and reduces the CR manipulation on her by 10, by 80, 100% if you get up maxed out. And then lastly, the the S1 uh, just decreases attack. Yeah, so she's got a buff. It's just 100% instead of just 75%. Um, oh, if you if you soul burn, she becomes AOE, which is pretty interesting. Uh, but anyway, the bottom line is that ultimately she's just not that useful. Like, there's really not a whole lot of places for her. Um, the thing with, like, okay, she's good in PvE, so she's good in, like I said, uh, Wyvern, or not Wyvern, she's good in uh, Banshee, as well as the Water Hunt. Um, the kind of, the things that are, like, kind of irrelevant about that is the fact that, like, other units can do the same job as good as her and still double dip. So you can probably run, like, a Violet and still get as much damage out of him than you'll get out of a Ram, right? So keep that in mind. Or, you know, Landy, right? We just had that triple banner, so everyone should have Landy, unless you're super new, in which case, if you just started the game, I don't know how you found this channel, but... If you're super new, then you're not going to have Landy, but most of us should have Landy by now, and Landy's a pretty good Banshee unit. Like I said, Landy will do as much as Rem does in Banshee. However, uh, like I said, you really just want to build that one-shot Banshee team anyway, right? So Landy's still just as ineffective as she is. Ineffective, ineffective, right? Uh, she's still just as ineffective. Um, so yeah, that's basically everything. Um, granted, uh, other people have probably done this a lot shorter, which, you know, <laughs> you might want to watch those channels uh for less long-winded uh commentary but um yeah so like i said if you're gonna choose between amelia and rem pull for rem um wait for amelia to come back when you have better gear or you know if you can pull them both i would suggest pulling them both um if you get rem early and you think you have enough i'd probably try for rem or for amelia as well um don't be stressed out if you don't get the artifacts because the artifacts aren't that good. Uh, nobody uses this, and nobody uses the Amelia one despite the Amelia one pretty, being pretty decent just because there's so much better stuff out there. Um, so yeah, until uh, until next time, we'll uh, we'll talk about... Uh, we'll have to figure out what the next video is going to be about. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you guys then.